Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today we're going to be talking about romance books that have pets in them. Baby, baby. So I love a good romance book where there is a pet in it where one of the main characters cares for and loves or even finds a pet in the book. Um, it's really 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 cute and so here are just some romances that I love that have a pet in them. First I'm going to talk about Sweet Temptation by Cora Riley. This is a mafia romance and it is an arranged marriage age gap romance as well. So this is a romance between Julia and Cassio. Um, Cassio's wife uh, died recently and left behind Cassio and his two children. A little baby girl and a I want to say three-year-old son um, and so in this mafia world if you have children they need a mother and so you have to do anything in order to get a mother for your children. The only possibility for this is to get married. In the mafia world you only get married within the mafia world and so Julia just turned 18 and she is the only candidate for this. So Cassio is put in an arranged marriage with her. So they barely know each other whenever they get married and they start living together. But right when they move in, Julia is put this, like put, this task is put on her to be a mother now. And so she takes care of these two children and learns to fully love them. And then Cassio finally breaks down his walls for her because he's has a lot of walls built up because of what happened to his wife. And you figure out also what happens to his wife in here. I really like this one. I know that not a lot of people do, but I do. The pet in here is the little dog. The dog was, I don't remember the dog's name, but the dog was the dead wife's dog. And so the hero hates this dog, like hates him. There's a little bit of an abuse here he locks the dog like in a room at one point and it's not good but like the son his son in here loves this dog loves him and then the heroine realizes how poorly the hero has been treating this dog and so she cleans it up and starts to love on him and the little boy is so grateful for her the dog is a very kind of big part of this story um he's like a little character in and of himself next i have blind fall by amanda milo this is an alien romance funny enough you would not guess from the cover this is a romance between an alien and a human woman uh this human woman she ends up getting abducted from earth with her guide dog she cannot see so she is blind and her guide dog coda is with her when she gets abducted um and they are put up for auction on this slave planet and our hero here just so happens to be passing by the auction and notices her like buys her to save her from the awful aliens that are leering at her and like are gonna do obviously horrible things to her so he buys her in hopes of hopefully returning her to her home planet and so while his friend is trying to find her own planet she stays with him at his farm um because he lives on a farm um and so her and coda live on this farm with him for a little bit this was so cute if you want a cute alien romance this one is the one to read i love the hero and how sweet he was and how he really like took time to understand the heroine and learn about her disability and how coda can help her so yeah if you want a good alien romance with disability rep this one is definitely one to pick up next i have on the way to you by candy steiner this is another dog romance so there's a dog in this one. This is the romance between Cooper and Emery. So Cooper has been working at this diner restaurant for quite a long time and she's saving up money to go to school in Washington. But she comes from a poor upbringing and so she's been saving money for quite a long time. Then one day Emery ends up walking into the restaurant one day and they get to chatting and she learned that he is also on his way to Washington and he asks her to come with him. He's like, I know we're strangers. I know this is a little weird, but do you maybe want to come to Washington with me and we can go on a road trip together? And at first she was like, no, that's really weird. But then she thinks about it a little bit and is like, this is probably the only chance that I have to go to Washington in an affordable way. Like I probably will never have this opportunity again. So she agrees and they go on this road trip together to Washington. If you know me, I don't like road trip romances. And I thought that this one was done pretty well so that's saying something our heroine in here is also an amputee so she has a prosthetic leg so there's disability rep in here as well as the heroine brings her dog with her um, i don't remember the dog's name but the dog is there and she's really cute and really sweet um so she's in the car with them the entire time they're on this road trip next i have get a life chloe brown by talia hubbard <laughs> y'all know if you've read this book you know how much i love this cat <laughs> Anyway, before I get into the cat, this is the romance between Chloe and Red. Chloe has fibromyalgia and at the beginning of this book, she almost gets hit by a car and she realizes that if she got hit by the car, she would have been known for doing nothing with her life. And so she makes a get a life list of things she wants to do before she dies. So it's basically like a bucket list. And one of those things on there is to move out of her parents' house into her own apartment. So she moves into her own apartment and there she meets the superintendent of the building named Redford. Right when they meet, they do not get along whatsoever and they banter like crazy. But... <laughs> The two of them end up getting in this situation where 
Chloe's a graphic designer, so she'll make Red's website for him because he is an artist. He will end up helping her with her get a life list as payment, I guess. Um, and so one of the best scenes in this book is when Chloe <laughs> sees a cat in a tree in front of her apartment complex and is like, I gotta save this cat. And so she climbs the tree to go save this cat named and who she names Smudge. And then Red like walks by and sees her up in this tree and is like, what the heck are you doing? <laughs> Super funny. And then she ends up taking Smudge with her even though Red is like, uh, no pets allowed. She's like, you're not letting me not keep this cat. I just did so much to save this cat. I am keeping it. So yeah, she names him Smudge and he's really cute. <laughs> Next I have That Kind of Guy by Talia Hibbert. This is a friends to lovers romance and an age gap romance where the woman is older. The characters in here are Ray and Zach. Ray in here has my chronic illness called POTS or postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, basically a chronic, chronic fainting diagnosis kind of thing. Ray is also a divorcee and so she realizes that she has been invited to this writer's convention. She is a writer and her ex-husband is going to be there with his new wife and so she's kind of upset and she's like I don't really want to go there not having a date and so Zach finds out about this and he's like I'll be your date I'll pretend you were to be your boyfriend to show this guy up. They're very close friends and then through them having to fake date at this convention they start to admit their feelings for one another and they grow to love one another. This is very much a friends to lovers romance between the two of them. The pet in here is Ray's dog. He's like this huge Great Dane and oh my gosh he is so fun. He is so fun and also like very intimidating and so other people are intimidated by Ray sometimes because she has this huge dog but he's a huge 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 softy and oh he was so cute. Next I have The Wallflower Wager by Tessa Dare. This is the third book in the Girl Meets Duke series. This one has a lot of pets in it. So this is about Lady Penelope and she lives by herself in this big house and she's she's a well-to-do lady but what she does with her life is she doesn't like to go out into society. She likes to stay in in her house and take care of the many animals that she has rescued. She rescued a lot of animals. There's a lot of cats, there's an otter, there's a goat maybe? There's like so many different kinds of animals here. She has a lot, it's like an animal sanctuary. And so Gabriel ends up purchasing the house that is next door to Lady Penelope in order to fix it up and like renew it and sell it back for a higher profit. But then he like can hear all of Penelope's like animals outside and like smell them. And he's like, no one is going to want to buy a house next to this monstrosity of a house filled with all these animals. And so he goes up to Penelope and is like, hey, what are we gonna do about this? I can't have these animals here. I can't sell my house if you do this, like if you keep these animals. And so she's like, okay, I understand. Um, I will help you like fix this situation if you help me find homes for every single one of the animals that I have. And he reluctantly agrees to this. So this is like the story of them trying to find homes for each of the pets that Penelope has. <laughs> this was of course really fun, really cute. The hero is a huge grump and the heroine is a huge sunshine. So I love that dynamic also. Some of the pets in here, you have a two-legged dog. So a dog that's on wheels. Um, you have a foul-mouthed parrot, a goat, an otter, and a hedgehog. So there's just a few of pets for you there. <laughs> Again, this is a really fun romance if you want. A historical romance that is just really easy and fun to read. This one and the rest of the series are definitely the books to read. Next I have Josh and Hazel's Guide to Not Dating by Christina Lauren. This is about Hazel and Josh and they first met in college and they were like kind of friends but then they like kind of weren't but then it's years later and they come across one another again and they decide to like reconnect to their friendship and they also decide to set each other up on blind dates. Um, however at the end of these blind dates they never end up like ending the night at their date, like with their date, they end up the night with the like each other, with each other, like hanging out, watching a movie, going to go do something. Like they never end the night with their date. <laughs> they end up spending time with each other instead. And they kind of realize this and is and are like, is this something? Is this, should we talk about this? Um, but this is a friends to lovers romance in here for sure. Hazel in here has like so many pets. <laughs> um, I know she has a dog, a, fi a couple fish, um, and a bunch of others, but she's very much like Penelope, like I just talked about, where she has a, a lot of pets, and that's like kind of like her aesthetic <laughs> 
is being quirky and having all these wonderful pets. Next I have Fire in Her Eyes by Ruby Dixon. This is book number seven in the Fireblood Dragon series. The Fireblood Dragon series is a dragon shifter series that Ruby Dixon has written where um, this takes place on Earth in a post-apocalyptic setting. So years ago a rift opened up in the sky and dragons started flying through the rift and started decimating the entire planet. Now there's only a few human survivor camps and then the rest of the world is like dominated by dragons. And so this is the only romance in the series where there is a female dragon involved. And so these dragons, whenever they send their mate, they can like finally turn into their human forms. And so our heroine dragon in here um she ends up sending her mate and he happens to be a human man and so yeah this is a romance between this dragon shifter and this human man so the human man in here the love interest he has a dog that is with him the entire time there's many scenes in here where you'll see him play fetch with the dog there's even one scene you read in the heroine's perspective when she's a dragon and she's like what is this man doing with this creature why is he throwing this circular de like spherical device to this dog like she doesn't understand that they're playing fetch at all <laughs> but she's observing them and it's pretty funny but yeah he truly loves this dog and has spent the entire apocalypse with the dog so the dog means a lot to him <laughs> next i have the air he breathes by Bernice c cherry this is the first book in the element series and the animal in this one is a dog and the dog is the whole reason why the hero and the heroine meet. So both characters in this situation have been dealing with grief. The hero just recently lost his wife and his child. Both of them are gone. They passed away. And then the heroine's husband ended up passing away as well recently. Um, so they're both dealing with grief. The heroine and her daughter are driving to their house one day after spending months at her mom's house after this tragic situation. And she accidentally hits a dog with her car in the rain, like on the street. The hero, who has been on a jog with the dog, sees this, is devastated, thinks his dog is dead, and the heroine is like so distraught. She's like, I am so sorry. Get in my car. I will take you to the vet. Like, we're gonna save this dog. And so he reluctantly gets in the car, is holding this dog, and she's glaring at this woman the entire time. Like, you killed my dog. The dog didn't actually die, so just yeah, no, no dog death. <laughs> but he's very upset that this woman almost killed his dog. And so that's how they meet. But then she also realizes that this guy is her new next door neighbor. And he's also now the town grump because he is very closed off and very grumpy because of what happened to his family. And so yeah, it's a romance between the two of them, a neighbor's romance, um, and two of them dealing with grief and coming together with their grief. I really like this one. Uh, it's one of my favorites, a part of the Element series. And of course, Brittany C. Cherry can do no wrong in my eyes. <laughs> and lastly, I have another historical romance for you. We have Darling Beast by Elizabeth Hoyt, the seventh book in the Maiden Lane series. This is the romance between Apollo and Lily. Um, so Lily lives with her son in, in a rundown theater because she used to be a very popular actress, but the theater that she performed in has been burned down. And so she's been living in this, in the remnants of this theater with her son. Her son, has well her family her and her son has this dog named daffodil <laughs> and she's this little uh italian greyhound so like think of jenna marbles like her dog kermit and peach like that kind of dog and this dog gets into so much trouble with the son and it is hilarious <laughs> um like their scenes together are so funny but anyway the heroine and the hero meet because the hero has been working on trying to renovate the garden surrounding the theater and he's also like a previous uh prisoner so he used to be in prison um so he's been trying to keep low profile and everything and he doesn't speak at all he got injured in jail like he got beat beaten so badly he cannot speak anymore um and so he's kind of a little bit of a recluse a little bit of a loner but then the heroine cannot help but be totally attracted and in awe of him because he's just so good with her son her son is just like so infatuated with him and so is daffodil <laughs> like daffodil is just so funny in here i love her she was definitely a shining moment of this book for me so of course Lily and Apollo end up falling in love and I really like this one. It was so, so good. So there you have it. Those are some romance books that have pets in them. I love these kinds of romance books so much. I just love pets. I've always been a pet person. My entire life I've never not had a pet. Like I've always had a pet at home. Um, always also more than three pets at once. Like currently we have six. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so, uh, pets are very, very, very near and dear to my heart, and so I love how the authors of these books integrated pets into this, these romance stories. Um, please let me know down below if you have any recommendations for me, I would love to know. Also let me know if you've read any of these books, or if you plan to, or if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, leave me a pet emoji of some sort, an animal emoji of some sort down below for me. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching, I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all!